Hello there. Some of you had requested me to upload videos on the ICSC Class 10 Environmental Science Syllabus. So here this goes, this is the first one of that series. Now this series is designed to be a review of each of the units. So you can use these videos at the end of the unit when you are revising before your exams or you can use it at the beginning of a unit as an overview to know what is to be expected in that particular unit. So I have chosen the first chapter that is chapter 6 known as biodiversity. Now this is the syllabus of the ICSC uh, that has been provided by ICSC and it has mainly three major parts. The first part is where we will be looking at what is biodiversity and what is the risk to biodiversity due to human actions. Then we'll look at what are the different conservation strategies that are in place. And lastly, we'll be looking at the strategies that are being employed globally as well as at the national level. So before we get into what is the threat, let's have a quick review of what biodiversity is. Now, biodiversity is made up of two words that is bio and diversity. Bio is signifying the living organisms and diversity means variation. So biodiversity is the variation of living organisms on the earth. It is, you can say the variety of living organisms that we find on earth all together is what we call as biodiversity. It includes the smallest of small microorganisms all the way up to the largest of the beasts that are there on the earth. It also includes seeds, it, all, it includes the genetic material, anything that is comprising or that can be considered as living is what we call as biodiversity. And there are three levels of this biodiversity or you can say the different types of biodiversity that is you can have biodiversity at the genetic level, at the species level or at the ecosystem level. When we say genetic biodiversity, it is the variation that exists within a particular species. In a species, say for example here the dogs, there is variety, there is variation and that is what we call as genetic diversity within the same species. When you have diversity, when you have variation amongst different species of a particular area, then we call it as species biodiversity. For example, in a particular forest floor, I can have insects, there will be rodents over there, there will be small worms over there. All of that together, they are all different species, but they are in the same region of the forest floor. So, the diversity or variation that exists amongst the different species, amongst the biotic factors, that is the living factors of a particular area or a region, is what we call as species biodiversity. And ecosystem biodiversity refers to the different ecosystems that are there in a particular location. So here it's not just the biotic factors that we take into place. We also look at the different abiotic factors, the non-living things. For example, in this region, this is a picture that I'm showing you of a particular national park in USA. You can see over here in that particular picture, in that very region, you have trees and that too trees of different types. You have a mountain, so there the organisms will differ. Then you have a water body, again there the organisms will differ. So you have different types of ecosystem. You have the aquatic ecosystem, you have a mountain ecosystem, you have the grass ecosystem, you have the forest ecosystem. All these different types of ecosystems are existing, are coexisting in one location, in one region and that is what we call as ecosystem diversity or ecosystem biodiversity. So, species diversity looks only at the living factors, biotic factors of a particular region whereas ecosystem biodiversity refers to both abiotic and biotic factors of a region. Now, this biodiversity is under risk and why is that? It is because man is the super consumer. In, on earth, man is the highest level of consumer. The level of consumption by man is very, very, very high. And that is the reason it is acting as a threat. It is posing a risk to biodiversity or all the other living organisms that we see around us. Now, the reduction of biodiversity started long back. It's not recent. It started 30,000 years ago because of the you know, the, the skills of man, the language skills, the social skills, men learn to, humans learn to come together, become like a community, live together, hunt. They learned the trapping of animals, killing of animals for food. So, because of all these skills, already the biodiversity started decreasing slowly. But what has happened is over the last few decades, there has been an exponential growth of human population. There has been overpopulation on the earth. Humans have surpassed all the other species in their numbers. So, 
due to this exponential growth of human population there has been an increased demand demand for food demand for the water resource demand for land area demand for fuel all of this has also increased exponentially and when that has increased when the demand has increased obviously it is putting a lot of strain on the resources of the earth it is exploiting whatever is there on the earth we have already exploited our fuel resources they are almost over we have exploited a lot of the water resources we are using and abusing all of these resources which is putting a strain on these natural resources so basically the balance on the earth is not there anymore the between the usage and the conservation there is no balance so due to overpopulation due to the exponential growth of the human beings and their demand and exploitation of all the natural resources that has definitely put a big strain on the natural resources we are having shortage of resources many resources have already you know started dying out many of the resources are polluted so we don't get them and this is what we will be looking at that is what is the impact of the human actions on earth's resources this is this is what we look at first before we get on to what is the risk on biodiversity because the biodiversity is one of the resources so the actions of human beings which is actually causing harm to the earth's resources first harm that it is causing is soil erosion soil erosion is happening because we are cutting down the trees that is deforestation when we cut down the trees there is no tree left to hold the soil so the soil is very loose whenever there is a strong wind whenever the water is flowing in the form of rain there are no roots to hold the soil and that leads to soil erosion as you can see over here this means when soil erosion keeps going on for a long period of time there's no more fertile land now that fertile land gets converted into a waste land which is what we call as desertification that is desertification is conversion of a fertile land into a barren land due to overgrazing due to deforestation due to the high heat and global warming all of that leads to formation of deserts which is called as desertification then we have a lot of ecological imbalance that's happening so in the nature there is imbalance because of all these activities there is no proper balance between the usage and the conservation between the number of organisms that are living the number of trees that are there all of that is you know now in an in a state of imbalance that is one of the impacts of human actions climate change is definitely an impact of human actions all of the actions that we take like for example if we cut down the trees automatically it is going to affect the climate of that particular region greenhouse effect increases and then we have you know too much of global warming which over a period of time causes climate change there is struggle for existence by all the organisms they don't have their habitats they don't know where to live then they start invading into the human areas so there is struggle for existence and not only that there is also slacking of economic growth why slacking of economic growth when our population is very very high in that region itself we are using all the resources so there is no resource left for us to export or to you know make money out of it because we are using it all up we are so many in number that we are using all our resource and we don't have anything for economic trading off of the country so these are some of the impacts of human actions on the resources of the earth but what is the reason for loss of biodiversity what are these actions that we are talking about it is affecting the natural resources no doubt but what are these actions what are the different risks that are there because of man being a super consumer there are there is loss of biodiversity that's happening by natural causes as well for example if there's a forest fire there will be loss of the trees there there will the animals will be killed there is loss of biodiversity but the man made causes the anthropogenic causes are much much more severe because we are killing animals and cutting down trees at a rate that is much higher than what nature does so these what i have shown you here are the four major risks to biodiversity or you can say the reason why biodiversity is getting lost from the surface of the earth the first reason is habitat loss so i already told you what we do is we have a lot of people living on earth we need places for those people to live so we need to make human settlements we need to give them food so we have to have farming we need to set up industries because all these people need a lot of goods they need a lot of products so for all of these reasons what we do is we recklessly deforest a particular area we cut down the forests of that region we even go for fragmentation of a habitat fragmentation means you don't completely cut it down for example in a forest if we build a dam you are not cutting down the forest completely but you have 
you know in that entire forest region you, in between you have put a dam so you have broken down the habitat now if there was a lion which was traveling from one end of the forest to the other now it cannot do that because there's a dam in between so that is what you call as fragmentation fragmentation and deforestation both of these are causing habitat loss so there is alteration of the habitat or loss of the habitat habitat what does that mean it means the place where a particular animal or a plant lives now when they don't have a place to live automatically they start dying out unless they are able to adapt it is a big big you know risk to biodiversity so loss of habitat due to farming industry settlements for which we do deforestation or fragmentation of habitat is one problem the second reason for loss of biodiversity is poaching poaching and killing so this definitely threatens the species because species or animals are illegally hunted a lot of plants are harvested a lot of wild plants are harvested because of their medicinal value to make herbal products many many animals are killed for their you know hides for their fur tusk of the elephants meat of some some of the wild animals meat is very exotic so for all of these reasons there is indiscriminate killing of the animals and that is what is considered as poaching the third reason why we are having loss of biodiversity is a conflict between man and wildlife what does this mean it means that man is using all of the resources we are using up all the resources that are there already the resources are limited and we are using all of these resources for our benefit when we use up all these resources automatically resources are now short for the animals or for the plants they don't have food they don't have space to grow they don't have you know uh, their habitat is getting lost so what they start doing is they now start attacking the farms they start attacking the fields they start attacking the agricultural lands they cause harm to the human settlements because all they are doing is looking out for food so that is what we call as man wildlife conflict and this is very very common across the world the main reason for this is because we human beings have encroached into their habitat into the wildlife habitat so this is again one big problem that is being seen globally lastly biological invasion that is when a particular species is introduced by mistake into a particular area that species the introduced species or you can say the alien species the foreign species that now starts growing very rapidly and takes over the original species the native flora so now that original organism which was there is unable to grow it could not compete it could not fight with the alien species so the introduced species rapidly expands and takes over a region that is called as biological invasion a very simple example of this what you might have seen near your houses is a weed called parthenium for those of you do, who don't know how parthenium looks like you can always google it parthenium was introduced in india as a weed it came along with other plants it actually came through wheat plants which were brought from the us as a contamination it came but once it came it started growing it you know surpassed all the other local weeds and now you find parthenium everywhere so that is one example of a biological invasion some foreign species comes in and then that takes over the original species this is again one more reason for loss of biodiversity so what we have looked at over here are the four reasons for the loss of biodiversity or these are the risks to biodiversity now why do we need to you know why this is a cause for concern why do we need to conserve biodiversity why are we talking about you know saving biodiversity what is their importance what is their value so reasons for concern is essentially the importance of biodiversity and in your syllabus they have very clearly mentioned the three major reasons for the concern or why we need to conserve wildlife that is the ecological reason the aesthetic reason and the economic reason ecological reason is the importance of biodiversity for smooth functioning of the ecosystem you might have studied about food chains and food web so to ensure that every organism on the earth is having food to make sure that they survive you need to have all organisms you need to have microorganisms for decomposition so that they you know provide nutrients in the soil there is cycling of the nutrients there is formation of soil all of those basic ecosystem services basic ecosystem values are being done by the biodiversity they are required for that they are required to make sure there's no soil erosion you need to have trees you need to have trees so that soil fertility is maintained 
you have to have trees so that the global warming is reduced so generally if we see for maintaining the ecosystem for smooth functioning of the ecosystem that is what comes under the ecological importance the second one is the economical importance economical is something that is related to money so you have a lot of products that we obtain from the ecosystem we we use a lot of the plants and animals around us as food we extract some medicines from it like antibiotics you may be using a lot of raw materials in the industry from these animals and plants so examples include wood pulp paper is obtained from the nature we have many other products you know we even have products like leather fur of animals silk textiles like cotton jute all of these are obtained from nature so they provide a lot of commercially important products which are you know uh, they we convert them into some commodity and then we market them and sell them and make money so they are important to us economically as well not only that aesthetic value as well aesthetic value is the value that is associated with you know the beauty so when there is nature when there is biodiversity it does provide a lot of richness and beauty to that particular region you all know it not all of us would want i mean i'm sure all of us would want to go to a place which is you know filled with beauty which is having a lot of trees which is having a water body there are a lot of animals and plants around that is what we would like to visit in comparison to some area which is not having any plant over there completely barren and hot you wouldn't like to go to such a place so that is why that is what is meant by the aesthetic beauty that is the aesthetic importance of biodiversity it also helps in tourism so there's also something called as eco tourism now recreational activities are based around nature and that is also one of the most important values of the biodiversity so these are the three reasons for concern these three importance are very much associated with biodiversity and that is why we need to conserve them so let us look at how we can do the conservation of biodiversity Thank you for watching this video. The second part of this chapter that is the conservation strategies of biodiversity has been uploaded as a separate video. Please do take a look.